Joining me now, a radio personality, Charlemagne the God, stand-up comedian Jenna Friedman, and comedian actor Maz Jabrani. Hello, you three beautiful people. How are you? Um, ask me that in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> now, right now. now, Charlemagne and 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 Jenna, you guys, uh, Maz, I'm very happy you're here, but I got to talk to these guys for just a second because they were here four years ago. How how does this feel compared to the experience four years ago? How would you stack it up? I've aged many decades in the past four years, so I'm trying to be a little optimistic, you know, tonight. On the bright side, it's it's a big night for women who uh, who listen to their husbands. Um, it's also the only night we get to see Trump care about more than one race. Lots of positives tonight. Does, that, does everybody have a cocktail? Does everybody have a little something to drink tonight? What are you, what are you working on? Sour Sop tea. Okay. I got... I got tequila Casamigos because after this election, I'm going to be locked up in my casa. And since my I have friends who voted for Trump, I'm going to lose a lot of amigos. Uh, Jenna, what you got? Uh, I've got a Moscow mule. Okay. And I'm double fisting. I've got a weird screwdriver. It's just any um, citrus, the color of Trump's face, mixed with vodka. Cheers. Um, could, I, could, I, could I get a bourbon? Would you mind making me a bourbon in just a... Oh, just neat. Just neat. Don't don't drown it. Now, Charlemagne, on election night in 2016, you said if Donald Trump becomes president, there will be a lot more division, racism, sexism, and classism. How does it feel to be right? <laughs> you know what's better than being right, Stephen? Being happy. And I'm not happy right now. And, and I just find it fascinating that Donald Trump was literally as bad as everybody said he would be. There's only one other person on this planet who exceeded all expectations people had of him, and that's LeBron James. LeBron was as good as people said he would be, and Donald Trump was as bad as people said he would be, and we are all witnesses, yet this election is still close tonight. What the f is going on? I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. Maz, you might know what's going on. I understand you were a poll watcher today. That's oh, yeah. Good I was for a you. That's a, lovely, that's a lovely thing to have done. I came from California to Nevada to be a poll watcher with the Nevada Democratic Party. And in the training, they said, just be on the lookout for any Republicans who might show up with guns. And I was like, what do we get? Like whistles? What am I? I got nothing. I, I'm over there. And, and my job, Stephen, it was, it was actually one of the most boring things in the world. My job was to time the guy from the end of the line to the front of the line, which would take about two hours. I felt like a coach for a track team that was just really slow. And at the end of the track race, all they get is a sticker and maybe a new president. I don't know. Maybe, maybe. Uh, Jenna, uh, four years ago, you expressed uh, in a very pithy way that I won't necessarily repeat that you were worried after it turned out that Donald Trump was going to be president about the state of women's reproductive rights, shall we say. And uh, four years later, how... How do you feel about the state of those rights for women? I feel most scared for our daughters, the ones we're going to be forced to have. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm trying not to be as crass as I was last time. You weren't crass. You, um, were, you, know, on, you were honest. You were honest. It is one of the few lines I remember. It's cool that Amy Coney Barrett is so pro-life, except when that life needs health care. Um, that's that's encouraging. <laughs> no, it's not. I yeah. I mean, it's sad. Um, but you know, you guys can get Plan B online and <laughs> uh, Plan C. Uh, you should all get that. It's called Moving to Canada. Uh, check that out. Okay. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Charlemagne, uh, Donald Trump made a big push uh, for black men this time around. How do you think that outreach went? Uh, I mean, I'm sure he captured a few, but black men are the second largest voting bloc for Democrats, so I doubt he captured enough to make much of a difference. But, I mean, he, he did target black men. They had ads direct, directed directly towards black men. I, I've seen a couple, and I was like, wow, that was powerful. If I didn't know any better, I might buy into that. What know? was powerful about it? 
Um, the ones that were highlighting Joe Biden's record, you know, because I mean, he does have a disgusting record. He's one of the architects of the war on drugs and mass incarceration in this country. And you can't just look past the 86 mandatory minimum sentencing and the 88 crack laws and the 94 crime bill. So if you're a black man and you're made aware of these things Biden has done and Trump is calling him out on it, saying he's going to be the opposite of that, you might support it. Me personally, the kind of systemic racism that Joe Biden has been a part of in this country, I can handle that. But the fascism that Trump brings, I can't handle. So even though Biden ruined black communities in the past, Trump and what he's implementing now would ruin us more in the future, I believe. Um, well, it was, it's sort of in a related uh, question, Maz, uh, many Iranian immigrants to the United States have supported the president. Um, you're of uh, Iranian descent. Why do you think in the light of the Muslim ban, which he essentially implemented even after the court said he couldn't by changing it slightly, what, what is the reasoning behind that support, do you think? I think a lot of Iranian immigrants think that Trump is somehow going to get rid of the Islamic Republic of Iran, which, let's be honest, it's an oppressive government. Uh, but uh, there's no plan there. Matter of fact, I was playing soccer one time and this one Persian dude comes up to me, he goes, Maz, I'm a big fan, but please stop making fun of Trump. I go, why? He goes, he's going to get rid of the mullahs. I go, how? He goes, I don't know. He's just fucking crazy. I was like, that can't be a strategy, bro. That's not a foreign policy. You can't just say that. So we're at a point where a lot of these guys are like that. And then I have buddies who've gone down the QAnon rabbit hole and I'm on these like message boards with their texts with these people and they'll come at me. I've become like the guy they come to. I feel like a political science teacher for an online college. And they come with me with all their wacky theories. And they're like, what about what about this? What about what about 5G? And I'm like, what about what the <laughs> hell is wrong with you people? They came at me when they, when HBO Max took off the uh, uh, Gone with the Wind. They were like, why Why did you guys take off Gone with the Wind? I go, when did you become a cinephile? Like, what are you asking me for? <laughs> what? Just what is the link between Gone with the Wind and Iranian Americans? Because they think this can the cancel culture. So I was in the oh, middle of like defending Black Lives Matter. And then they were like, what about cancel culture? What about this? What about Hunter Biden? I'm like, what about, what about when you, you educate yourself? Like you said, there's the travel ban. There's the sanctions that, that the people of Iran are suffering under. Yes, the regime's a bad regime, but the people are suffering. So I don't know. I'm telling you, I, I just I'm just continue to drink Casamigos. Uh, Jenna, it's so dark that <laughs> it's so crazy that it's just sometimes you have to um, <laughs> dress your dog as an iconic Supreme Court justice <laughs> oh. who died. Oh. I don't know, you guys. I'm just trying to lighten the mood. That this is, is potato. <laughs> Oh, look at RBG. She's adorable. Yeah. Jenna, you, four years ago, I asked you <laughs> what you were gonna do now that Trump is president, and you said, I'm going to Portugal. You literally were going to Portugal the next I day. I had a gig in Portugal. Um, I'm not going anywhere this time. Wait a second, I'm you had a gig <laughs> in Portugal? You were playing a comedy club in Portuguese? <laughs> no, it was like Web Summit. It was a tech event, and I was performing at it for, you know, tech tech kids. So well, uh, are you going to go anywhere tomorrow? What do you, what, do you have any plans to go, to go back to Portugal? I'm staying put, uh, and when I do leave the house, I wear a mask. I don't know oh, if that's, like, controversial. <laughs> I'm sorry. I forgot. I for we're not allowed to go anywhere. We're all trapped. Anymore. We can't go anywhere. Um, any, as the uh, night widens down, uh, any final thoughts? Charlemagne, anything to leave us with? Um, I guess my final thought is, uh, you know, simple. You know, this administration, the Trump administration, has showed us who they are. The question is, will America continue to let them be? And will America continue to let any of this be? Like, we have to be the change that we want to see in the world. And regardless of who wins tonight, me as a black man, I got work to do. I'm going to keep community building, job creating, and dealing with politics on a local level. And if Biden Harris win, it's no celebration, no honeymoon. I'm on their ass immediately. All of these promises that were made during this, uh, this campaign, all of the crime bills Biden has implemented that have ruined black communities, he has to atone for that. And if we get them in the White House and help them flip the Senate, we got clear demand we need to get met, and I'm going to be holding Democrats accountable to make sure they keep those promises. Well, uh, Charlemagne, Jenna, Maz, thank you so much for being here. And thank you. Uh, thank stay you. safe. <laughs> Bye, potato. Absolutely. Stay sterile.